Let's try that again. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and Happy New Year. I see a lot of people wearing two masks these days. If two is better than one, five must be better than two. If you still depend on these for your immunity, good luck. If you're scared, wear a mask. If you're scared, get a vaccine. Fear still controls many, unfortunately. You are responsible for your health, not others. And when the government runs your health, you'll be as healthy as our government. Today is Wednesday, January 20th, inauguration date. This lecture is pre-recorded for YouTube. About time you, you will see it, it's gonna be February. There continues to be a lot of civil unrest in our country, and for some good reasons, but some people don't care about losing their rights. Where are you gonna draw the line? It's just a mask. It's just a mask. It's just a vaccine. It's just a vaccine. With that aside, I've got a great lecture in store for you guys this evening. The functional medicine approach to your thyroid. I'll be bumping up my lectures to the beginning of the months. Um, going forward will be beginning of May, beginning of uh, October for the fall, and uh, beginning of February. My next lecture, Dr. Just Top 20 Products. This will be the, pretty much the top products that we use at our office on a regular basis. I'm going to sprinkle some cool gems from Dr. Versatile and the CRA with the contact reflex analysis and kind of spice it up for this next lecture a little bit. Back in January, I did the adrenal thyroid connection. My last lecture was battling adrenal fatigue. Tonight, our focus is all on the thyroid. We are everywhere on social media. It's not too hard to find us. Connect with us and uh, you know, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. We're quiet on the Twitter aspect, but uh, we are everywhere else. I have personally been a little bit more quiet on my social media aspect. 2020 burnt me out with the politics and uh, just I've disconnected a little bit. I'll get back on track, but I got burnt out a little bit like many other people have. The blog's been a little quiet. I'll be blogging a little bit more as well. We got a newsletter. If you're not on our newsletter, go to our website and uh, sign up for our newsletter as well. This is our team and we need to update our team photo. I think we're waiting for some warmer weather because Dr. Gill's been with us since November. He has been a phenomenal, great fit for our office. We've known him over the years. We jive very well. It's awesome. Great addition to our, the practice. If you've had a great experience with us, we like to hear it. We like you to share it with others as well. Write us a review on Google, um, Facebook, whatever. Uh, we like to hear it. If you're out of state and want some help, we would love to help you out. We'd love to Skype with you. We have a strong virtual practice here. We get a lot of patients that ask us who does what you do, where we're at, and not as good luck making great referrals as much as we have with Skyping with those patients on a regular basis. This is one of my Skype patients. She's down in Florida. is helping her out with fertility. I got this nice card right around Christmas. It's, this is the stuff that drives me to help work and fight harder for you guys in your health conditions. And it was just a, a great case that she, just, she didn't think she could get pregnant and we kind of proved them all wrong. It's pretty cool. Raising healthy kids is rather easy. Digging them out of the hole that some of you guys start them off in is a lot more challenging. These are my kids, five and three. We flew twice over this last year. We're not scared of what's going around. You take care of your body and your body will take care of you. On my next lecture of my top 20 products, this will definitely be one of them, organically bound minerals. I haven't used this supplement since my early college days. In my early college days, I lay in bed all angst my heart's pounding so hard in my chest, so hard in my chest, I could physically count my pulse without feeling a spot on me. Pulse would be in the high 90s all the time. 
was like, what the heck's going on? Is my heart driving me into anxiety or is my anxiety driving my heart nuts? I would crave bananas that were more green than yellow. And this is a potassium pill that chilled my system. I was stuck in a sympathetic dominant mode and I couldn't chill my system out. Hopping on that supplement, my pulse went right back to the mid 70s. It chilled my system out and it calmed it down. The end of 2020 kind of kicked my butt. I've talked with some Skype patients and patients in the office about what has personally gone on, but I'm getting back on track. Short, short story, short of it, I got nailed on a fraudulent cashier's check selling a vehicle that has stressed me to the max since Thanksgiving, in short. Dr. Ted and I were just talking about this today, the therm scan. You know, we do this in the office. We're not 100% sold. We're gonna continue in this direction, uh, uh, doing it in the office. We may resort back to the therm scan uh, that's in uh, off Woodward uh, Avenue as far as uh, sticking with them and their results and the same person who was reading uh, the, therm uh, the therm scan. So kind of in between things right now. Uh, but if you're still interested, contact the office first to see if we're still gonna continue using this lady or if we're gonna resort back to using uh, our original person. The social dilemma, depressed, anxiety, no motivation, no drive. Depressed, anxious, no motivation, no drive. This is all I hear about your teenage kids and trickling to the adults. This was a documentary on Netflix. I highly recommend it and this is another reason I have slowly tried to disconnect from the social media aspect because what it's doing to everybody. They have engineers on every platform, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, you name it, that knows what sucks you in, what, how much time you're spending on it, and it gets you hooked being stuck going right back to this. It's unbelievable and jaw-dropping when you watch this. And your kids are anxious and depressed because this is a huge source. And all this EMF exposure through 2020, more FaceTime or more screen time and whatnot, all this EMF stuff has fried your brains on top of it. Yes, I'm one of them now. <laughs> I'm one of those Peloton people by default. And I say by default because my wife really wanted one of these. So I go, all right, you know, I ride a bike during, I mountain bike during the summertime. I'll stay fresh on my legs during the winter. I'll train and hop on this thing too. So I default this on this more of my wife than me, but 90% her and 10% me, but now it's 90% me riding it, 10% her. So I'm one of them right now. I've been surprisingly impressed with how cool some of those workouts are on that as well. COVID-19, getting kind of tired about talking about a good bit of this, but as of Wednesday, January 20th, it's now safe to slowly reopen the economy. What a joke. Are you tired of these politicians playing games with you guys yet? It's unbelievable. Generation sick. How sick are Americans? Well, according to the CDC, six in 10 adults in the US have a chronic disease. Four in 10 adults in the US have two or more chronic diseases. Heart disease, cancer, medical errors are still the leading causes of death. More than 40% of adults are obese. More than 19% of children are, are, are obese. The key drivers for chronic disease, smoking, poor nutrition, lack of exercise, and excessive alcohol use. 2020 has kicked a lot of people's butts. Do you think in 2020, when you guys have more time on your hands, that you cut back on smoking, ate better, exercise, and cut out some of the alcohol? No. Everyone went in reverse, unfortunately. Bottom line is chronic disease doesn't develop overnight. COVID-19 
Its biggest risk category group is 50 and above with pre-existing health conditions. Bottom line. 2020 was the year of the mask. 2021 is the year of the vaccine. My mask doesn't work unless you're wearing one. My vaccine doesn't work unless you get one. Okay, I'll get a vaccine. But you still have to wear a mask, you still have to social distance, and you still might get COVID. Oh, interesting. Why am I going to get a vaccine then? I don't know. It makes sense if you don't think about it. Back to 2009, swine flu. This was the beginning of the healthcare workers losing their rights over a flu vaccine, over a flu vaccine. After the swine flu year, 2010, when they started introducing the H1N1, H2N3, and the flu strain all in one, they were starting to force healthcare workers to either get the vaccine or wear a mask during flu season. To a few more years later down the road, no, we don't even want you to wear a mask. You're either gonna get the shot or we're gonna fire and replace you. 2021, they're coming for you. We'll see how far this goes as far as you guys losing your rights. Vitamin D and comorbidities with COVID-19 patients. Yes, we knew pre-existing health conditions in patients having COVID that this was more of a problem with them. But more and more literature is coming out that most of these patients that are struggling have a low vitamin D status. Have you guys still underestimate the quality vitamin D and having sufficient amount in your system? Most of you guys have. Signs of a vitamin D deficiency, fatigue, depression, muscle pain, weakness, joint pain, chronic pain, weight gain, high blood pressure, restless sleep, poor concentration, headaches, bladder problems, bone spurs, continuation, all these other symptoms in through here. Vitamin D is a huge precursor for a lot in the body. Five to 6,000 IUs a day is the adult daily protocol of quality vitamin D. And our question of Certain people are even absorbing it. You want to check that on your vitamin or your vitamin D on your um, your blood work. This is my immune protocol. This is what I have done in this last year. Vitamin D, vitamin C, astragalus. I rotate that astragalus complex with oregano oil pills. The ADP of Biotics Research. I'll rotate that between the astragalus complex. But I'm always up on my D. I'm always up on my C. ACDC, the rock band, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, and more C. This is what my kids do. And I kid you not when I say this is a million dollar protocol. I get their water bottle, two shots of the complete care spray, a little bit of the buffer vitamin C, shake that in there. They go to school with that, they get that. Vitamin D drops a few times throughout the week, and they have impressive immune systems being around everyone else. But Pfizer claims 95% effective uh, vaccine. A 95% effective vaccine, well, oh, congratulations, but viruses mutate. What's in that vaccine and what's going around is most likely pretty much different. This is why the flu vaccine's worthless. Viruses mutate and they change form. The flu virus mutates every single year. The flu vaccine at best is 20, 30% effective at best. Well, let's go on a little bit more about Pfizer. Many of your politicians are lobbied by Big Pharma. This is your top contributors of 19 into 2020. This is opensecrets.org. You can look this all up. Oh, who's number two? Oh, Pfizer's right there. Blue is your Democrats, red is your Republicans. Who are their top recipients of 2020? Follow the money and you will find the truth. Follow the money and you will always find the truth. I hate politics. Gosh, do I ever just hate politics and don't even want to talk about this stuff during my lecture. But when certain people are appointed in office, you got to look at where they're assigning certain people to. Dr. Jeff, I'm gaining weight all the time. My stomach hurts. What's wrong? Well, you know, in our country, we're, our food is full of genetically modified components. You go to Europe and other countries, they don't have this crap in their food. Unfortunately, we do, and politics, politics dictates some of this stuff. 
Vilsack emerges as a top Biden candidate for agriculture, AKA Mr. Monsanto. AKA Mr. Monsanto, why is he AKA Mr. Monsanto? Well, while serving Obama's uh, agricultural secretary, Vilsack made a few controversial moves regarding genetically modified crops. For instance, he ex expedited the approval process for GMOs. He helped create a GMO labeling bill meant to replace Vermont's stricter, stricter standards and he did away with regulations on big agricultural to appease the industry. That's just some of the stuff. Just continue to follow the money. All that aside, let's dive into the thyroid part of this lecture. The thyroid gland structure and function. The thyroid gland is a butterfly shaped organ located in the base of your neck. It releases hormones that control metabolism the way your body uh, uses energy. Main hormones T3 and T4 is released. Thyroid hormones regulate vital body functions including breathing, heart rate, central and peripheral nervous systems, body weight, uh, muscle strength, uh, menstrual cycles, body temperature, and cholesterol levels. A lot of patients I see that have a thyroid that's slightly off, that cholesterol goes up right off the bat. And if a doctor doesn't pick this up right they want to get people on stat medications to lower their cholesterol and not go properly after the real cause which is the actual thyroid thyroid hormones have profound effects on many physiological processes such as development growth and metabolism as we said t3 t4 and calcitonin are the main hormones that are released this is functional medicine this right here is functional medicine this isn't just Here's your TSH, it's up or it's down. Here's a medication or here's a supplement. This here is functional medicine. It's looking at the whole picture. It's looking at oxidative stress. It's looking at immune dysfunction, nutritional factors like nutritional deficiencies, hormonal imbalances, environmental factors, GI stress, detoxification and liver problems that all affect your thyroid and why your thyroid's not exactly working. So what are manifestations of a hypothyroid? Fatigue, waking, anemia, cold intolerance, uh, cold, coarse uh, skin, brittle hair, hair loss, uh, non-pitting edema, hair loss, uh, the edema around the eyes, facial puffiness, sometimes a goiter on some people, the weight gain, um, menstrual disorders, infertility problems, depression, constipation are all some of your key factors with an underactive thyroid. I've got a lot of cool cases, and these cases I'm gonna go through tonight, these are all within pretty much the last two years because I treat a ton of thyroid issues throughout the office. 53-year-old female, fatigue. Fatigued all the time, rarely wakes up rested. Symptoms started when hormones were being tested uh, for IVF. Her thyroid, TSH, is in normal range. Never tested for thyroid antibodies. She's on, a lot of these patients I'm going over and fixing, they're already on medications. She came to me wanting me to go over her thyroid stuff. She's already on thyroid medication, and her thyroid is already in range to me not even really having to do anything. I see a lot of patients that have autoimmune thyroid issues, which we'll dive into, Hashimoto's graves, or even other just regular hypothyroid stuff that everybody is chasing the thyroid. And if they still feel fatigued, they're giving them this medication, that one's not working, we'll move you to this medication. And they're missing the adrenal issues. They're, and then in this case, they're missing Epstein-Barr, EBV. Her issue was Epstein-Barr, and this goes back to the immune dysfunction that is addressing that could be contributing to thyroid issues. On her follow-up, and this is just a month, her energy is a lot better. Her Epstein-Barr factor is absolutely through the roof. Everybody misses this, and you can see her autoimmune factors, TPO and thyroid antibodies, were perfectly fine. But yet, she still has some involvement with her immune system with the EBV and her thyroid and the way she was feeling. She was fatigued from her mono, not so much her thyroid. 
but everyone keeps tinkering as your female, it's your hormones, it's your thyroid, and they just keep rotating things around. If, if it doesn't work, it's easy just to tell you, oh, it's in your head, now we need to go down on the path of psychiatric medications and dabble around there. So a lot of times, thyroid issues, you'll cold intolerance. People are cold and they think it's their thyroid. Sometimes it's more of an anemia issue. I will look at people's nails all the time. If I see white nails, this is more of the anemic aspect. Easily fatigue, loss of energy, rapid heartbeat, short of breath. Uh, the obvious things, the uh, dizziness, the pale skin, leg cramps, insomnia. These are people that yawn a lot. A lot of yawning if people are anemic because they're starved for oxygen and that iron carries oxygen. Learn to build up your blood quality. This is stuff we even do with patients. Even you can look at this and look at their nails, even if their blood work doesn't show it. Some people are subclinical anemic. They have symptoms of it. You can see it on their nails, but you don't always see it on their blood work. Dr. Tent's one of those people. This is what an iron deficiency in correlation with thyroid ranges look like. Your TSH will be high, the free T4 may be low, free T3 may be low as well. I'm going to show you charts, show you guys numbers today. So the opposite of a hypothyroid is a hyperthyroid, which is an overactive thyroid. This is fatigue, heat intolerance, sweating, weight loss. Uh, sweaty skin, eyeballs that look like they're just ready to pop out of your head, goiter, increased heart rate, palpitations, um, the uh, fast heart rate, AFib issues, increased stool issues, uh, infertility, tremors, anxiety, nervousness. This is, these, a real hyperthyroid could be very, very difficult to manage. Um, and an auto, and a lot of autoimmune issue, or certain autoimmune issues will drive a hyperthyroid, primarily Graves disease. Graves disease is a type of auto, autoimmune problem that causes the thyroid gland to produce too much thyroid hormone, which is called hyperthyroidism, and is an underlying cause of a lot of hyperthyroid cases. Your body's attacking the thyroid and creating the overreact. This was a cool, cool case that I'm going to talk about next. Well, actually, before I jump there, this is what Graves looks like on blood work. So actually, let me break down some of the ranges. On most blood work ranges, your TSH should be 0.45 to 4.5. Ideally, I want to see your TSH 1.0 to 2.0. Even at 2.0, to 4.5, people could exhibit hypothyroid symptoms and I still may treat someone that's at the higher end of normal. If your thyroid's working too fast and too much, hyperthyroid, Graves disease, your TSH will be below 0.45, just looking at numbers. So here's a, this was a 38 year old female, she's in 2018, diagnosed with bipolar disease racing heart, stomach ache, sweating. She can, uh, she can think of uh, recently, let's see, recently, she was on lithium and Seroquel, having a hard time falling asleep. Her insides were racing like crazy. They almost have her institutionalized on this lithium and Seroquel, and her insides feel like she's running 100 miles an hour I test her, and you can kind of see my list of what I'm going after. I'm going after anxiety. She has some ear issue, and I think uh, some menstrual issues down below that I was trying to fix. Run blood work. I look at her thyroid. This is a hyperthyroid number below 0.45. I go, no one's told you that you've got a hyperthyroid? She's like, no. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Everything you're dealing with, your anxiety, the raciness on the inside of your body, everyone has missed your thyroid. You're anxious and feel like you're going nuts because of your thyroid, not because you're really going nuts, it's because of your thyroid. I fixed your thyroid, everything started to calm down, she felt a million bucks different. It, I couldn't believe that everybody missed, 
missed that. It just baffled me that they, she went down the wrong direction with this. Now I took a picture and I scrolled up on this chart we write down on our charts if you're a vegetarian in our office and we're treating you guys for anything mood related wise, your brain is 60% fat, functions best on a high good fat, good protein diet. Unfortunately, some of our vegetarians, not all, some of our vegetarians are more carbohydrate-itarians, sugar sugar itarians, dessert itarians and your blood sugar's a complete disaster, and if your blood sugar's up and down and more tanking down because of that, your moods are gonna follow that as well. So if I'm, we're treating things that are moods, we need to be aware of those types of things. Gluten thyroid connection. Several studies, tons and tons of literature showing that there is a gluten thyroid connection, especially if you have thyroid, um, Antibodies are the TPO factor elevated on your blood work. A lot of times I'm gonna cut patients off of gluten until I further rule out that that's not a problem. And the gluten IgG antibodies, the one I will run to confirm that, not the celiac factors like your other doctors run. Hashimoto's is an autoimmune thyroid condition. Graves is an autoimmune condition. Both of it, your body attacks the thyroid but when your body attacks the thyroid, one causes hypothyroidism. When the other one attacks your thyroid, it creates hyperthyroidism. We'll dive more into that in a second. This is a goiter. You can see one of the bulging eyes that you get with a hyperthyroid case, but hypo and hyperthyroid cases, certain patients will get uh, a goiter. And causes of a goiter uh, may be lack of uh, iodine in the diet, a high level of TSH, the Graves Hashimoto's disease. Goiters uh, could also be problems with nodules um, and cancer in some people. And, and I swear, dental the overuse of dental x-rays is driving people into thyroid cancers. Let's dive a little bit more into the Hashimoto factor. Hashimoto's thyroiditis, also known as chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis, is the most common cause of hypothyroidism in the United States. It's an autoimmune disorder involving chronic inflammation of the thyroid. This condition tends to run in families. Over time, the ability of the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormones often becomes impaired and leads to a decline in function. And eventually, an underactive thyroid uh, follows that. Effects. A bit more of the middle-aged women, but could also be seen um, in men and children as well. So let's dive into some cases. 55-year-old female diagnosed with Hashimoto's current symptoms. Crazy weight gain, hormone imbalance, off the charts, fatigue, mild hair loss, thyroid issues. Several years, and she, did, and she questions, do I have a virus? She came in, she's on thyroid medication, um, and you can see her TSH is 5.28, and I write down everything I'm gonna treat. She muscle tests it for mono stuff, so I'm gonna treat her for mono. Infection-wise, she tests it with some thyroid stuff, and I'm after, you know, especially the mono patients, the mono patients always have some adrenal issues going on. I treated all three of those on her. And I even ran a saliva cortisol panel. Go back to this, look at crazy weight gain, crazy weight gain, hormonal imbalance. Cortisol, her stress driving up the cortisol. If cortisol goes up, insulin glucose goes up, weight gain follows that. If cortisol's up, all your other hormones get thrown off. You gotta fix the cortisol if you wanna go after this. And if you wanna balance a thyroid patient, you have to balance the adrenals. The adrenals and thyroid go hand in hand. As we go further through this lecture, you'll see this. Follow-up fatigues, uh, so much better, 95% better, uh, sleeping better and everything. This is an Epstein-Barr, thyroid and adrenal. Nobody knows how to play this EBV like our office does. Here we go, thyroid, 47 year old female, thyroid antibodies up, 257. Uh, TSH was in range, now it's about 
ultrasound found four nodules. She's got four nodules on her thyroid. One centimeter, it's one centimeter each. They were wanting to uh, do the biopsy. Actually, they were just wanting to remove her thyroid. I go, give me some time to work on your thyroid and let's see what we could do. On my next lecture, that's gonna be my top 20 products, what I use on her thyroid will be my number one product. I'm not gonna tell you what it is tonight though. Her follow-up no longer has three nodules. Her doctor scratching their heads because I shrunk her nodules on her thyroid. I got her off her thyroid medication. I replaced it with the GTA Forte 2. <clears throat> that TSH, I had to readjust it, still, still out of range, but we had, got her thyroid in range and we shrunk her nodules and her doctors are all scratching her head because they want her to remove her thyroid. You can see I did some topical liquid iodine, but that's not the main thing I used to work, that was part of what I used to work with the nodules. The follow-up on that will be my next lecture. Another patient, let's see, Hashimoto's. This is a 21-year-old female. So let's dive to the younger ages here. 21-year-old female, started on a cruise. Felt like she was drugged. Terrible brain fog, very lethargic. She kept complaining about brain fog and very lethargic. Her TSH is 3.03. .03. She was on some thyroid medication. She goes, it's in my, in my thyroid antibodies are up. She's like, this is my thyroid. I want you to fix my thyroid. I don't think my doctors are getting to the point of, you know, helping me out for my thyroid. Brain fog, very lethargic. Her thyroid's off. Everyone could chase her thyroid, but it's not her thyroid. I jumped right to a hair test to run a hair analysis on her right off the bat. Mercury. Her mercury is elevated. Her brain fog and feeling like she's poisoned is mercury toxicity. You could dive back on my heavy metal lecture in the past. I forgot what year I did that. I don't have that written on this one, but I talked about these hair tests and looking at heavy metals. And it's something that I will incorporate with a lot of these thyroid cases. And I'll show you another one real quickly as well. 33 year old female diagnosed with Hashimoto's, TPO antibodies not in range, nodule on her th thyroid as well, cold, skin is dry, hormones in range. Um, to, 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 to see what we got. She had the dental amalgams fillings removed two years ago. So that's, you know, some of her symptoms are thyroid stuff and the amalgams was a red flag for me to kind of run a hair test with her. Her mercury is through the roof as well, right in that middle range. But even more importantly, her gut is diminished. You need stomach acid to help you absorb your minerals. If you've got a dead stomach, everything will go to the center and leak to the left. She's not absorbing her minerals. So I guarantee you there's a lot more gut issues that's affecting her thyroid and why she can't keep it in range as well. So like we talked about with the adrenal lecture with the brain and the adrenals with the thyroid, you always address the top down approach, the hypothalamus, the pituitary down to the thyroid and the thyroid and where it affects all different areas of the body. Even within the brain, the hypothalamus and the pituitary are both in the brain. The hypothalamus speaks to the pituitary. Obesogens, which are environmental pollutants, exogenous estrogens, the xenoestrogens, and certain medications could even block the secretion for the thyroid hormone just from the hypothalamus to the pituitary. So there's certain things that people are being exposed to that's just affecting that even within the brain. Your thyroid gland, when it releases the T3 and T4, affects all these different areas within the body. Here's a nice little diagram and chart that explains that, or shows that, I should say. But we're going to talk about the pituitary and just go over this very briefly. Pituitary, 
pituitary gland problems, lack of growth in children, migraines around the periods, stomach ulcers, secondary thyroid problems, and pituitary tumors. I'm working actually with a pituitary problem with my cousin's child who's two years old and underdeveloped with a preemie and running some blood work, there's some pituitary factors that are off with him that they want him to go see an endocrinologist. And I'm going to use some cool things that I used with my younger brother using zinc in a glandular pituitary component to help release more growth hormone. My brother's taller than me now when he was the runt of the family just by unblocking his pituitary and doing some simple nutritional stuff that I wish I knew when I was younger. A hyperactive pituitary may have issues with failing memory, low blood pressure, increased sex drive, headaches. If it's a, you know, headaches is very common, especially if there's a tumor related thing. And that's the scary thing if you got some uh, overactive problems with a pituitary. Uh, hypofunction, abnormal thirst, uh, bloating, uh, infertility should be on here as long, along with the menstrual disorders. Um, tendency to ulcers is the kind of, kind of sneaky thing as well and some other um, weight gain issues as well. Go back to the hypothyroid symptoms, depression, low leg, low grade depression, difficulty losing weight and everyone associates thyroid metabolism and the weight stuff, dry skin, headaches, fatigue, uh, memory problems, menstrual problems, recurrent infections, sensitive to the cold, and the high blood fats. So hypothyroidism uh, due to pituitary dysfunction. So there are certain patients, and this is why you got to look at the patient, you got to muscle test them, you got to know the functional medicine stuff, you got to just be able to put it all together because it's not just looking at the TSH and throwing someone on a medication. There's patients that have a pituitary issue, it's not as much as a thyroid. And if your TSH is on the lower end, which would be like a hyperthyroid, but you have hypothyroid symptoms, you gotta treat the pituitary gland first, and that's key. So the hypothalamus is in the brain, talks to the pituitary, down to the thyroid, then your T4 goes, your liver, kidneys, and goes down to the T3 and goes to your cells for energy. <clears throat> a simple diagram, just kind of give you a quick glimpse of how that goes. Now, detoxification-wise, if your liver is blocked up with certain medications, you're blocking your detox pathways, you are going to create dysfunction all through here. So this is where that detoxification component comes with. Is the problem my adrenals or my thyroid? I talked about this last lecture when we were talking about adrenal stuff. Hypothyroid symptoms and hypoadrenal symptoms will mirror image each other and you really need to know which one you're going after. Hypothyroid symptom survey form, you can see increased weight gain, the appetite, the fatigue, ringing in the ears, sleepiness, uh, the cold, the skin issues, constipations, mental sluggishness, so forth and so on. And you go to the hypo underactive adrenal symptoms, a lot of them will mirror image each other. Weakness and fatigue, chronic fatigue, low blood pressure, uh, ridges and weak nails, tendency for hives, arthritic tendencies, uh, perspiration increase, bowel disorders, poor circulation, this craving of the salt, dizziness from sitting and standing, swollen ankles, weakness for colds and flus, allergies, very common with these types of patients. Know what you're treating, and a lot of times you have to treat both the thyroid and the adrenal if you want to lock in your thyroid numbers properly. 53-year-old female diagnosed with hypothyroidism one year ago. Look at the symptoms. Not sleeping well. Weight gain. Hormonal imbalance. It's like a broken record every time I'm seeing a case like this. Weight gain. Not sleeping well. Hormonal imbalance. Well, let's look at some things real quick. A quick little... Saliva test, a quick little saliva test. High cortisol, cortisol is elevated. DHEA is through the roof. High cortisol, insulin problems, glucose issues, weight gain, weight gain. You think high cortisol, think weight gain. So her issues with her thyroid was more so with the cortisol being more of the problem than it was her thyroid uh, in this case, trying to help her out with the weight gain and everything. She had pain going on from her shoulder and her neck, 
that I think was driving her quarters all around and she wasn't sleeping well because of it. This was something we actually recorded on our Instagram page. She had a shoulder issue. I fixed her shoulder about 80%, yanked her shoulder in place, which was, if you go on our Instagram thing, you can see that video. But on top of that, she had a pretty extensive neck surgery. C3, C4, that nerve root refers pain to the shoulder. She hasn't been adjusted in over 10 years since having this surgery. I'm comfortable adjusting around stuff like that in the neck because I've done it long enough now. <clears throat> I adjust that 3-4 spot and got her pain out of that shoulder about 80%. Her shoulder was so far out of place for so long, she had a bit of a frozen shoulder that we're working with nutritionally, trying to loosen that up the rest of the bit. But she has a very cool story. Now, stress dries up cortisol. Cortisol creates hormonal imbalances in the body. Cortisol will throw off your thyroid function because it shuts off the conversion process. Your pituitary talks to your thyroid gland. Cortisol will shut that off. T4 converts to T3. High cortisol will shut that off. If you got cortisol issues and adrenal issues, you need to address them first if you want to balance that thyroid, and that's why. Nutritional support. Start of osteoporosis, hip and spine, takes calcium, vitamin D, 59-year-old female, losing hair, she's losing her hair, and it's thinning. Her TSH is 1.49. She's already on thyroid medication. She's like, I want nutritional support. Maybe you could look at my thyroid, but my thyroid's in range, but I'm still losing my hair and it's thinning, and I got osteoporosis. Well, I don't think you're absorbing things properly. How am I going to prove that? Well, I'm going to look at a hair test. She had the mercury. That's besides the point. Her gut is dead. All the minerals are going this way. If she's not absorbing her minerals, this is why she's got osteoporosis. You need vital minerals to be absorbed to help support your bones. She is lacking minerals and not absorbing it. If you're not absorbing your minerals too on top of your bones, your hair and your nails, you'll see issues very easily. Brittle nails and hair thinning and falling out if you're not absorbing your minerals. I even checked to look at her cortisol. Her cortisol wasn't bad. I've seen some really wacky ones with it all up here. That was a little coffee in the morning, but that wasn't too bad. She's, her stomach's more of the problem. These adrenal kits, you could run, I got them at the office. I could ship them out to you with insurance. They run about $65. If you pay cash, they're 120. It's probably Genova's most cost effective, cheap test that I run with, with my patients. If you're interested, email me, contact the office. We can get that situated for you. Signs and symptoms of adrenal dysfunction compared to thyroid dysfunction. Well, cholesterol tends to run high with thyroid dysfunction. Energy tends to be low. Losing weight tends to be difficult. Body temperature and low and stable. Adrenal cholesterol tends to be low. Wired and tired, wired and tired, wired and tired with the adrenal patients. Difficulty gaining weight in some cases. If it's, um, if it's high cortisol, people will gain weight pretty easily. Body temperature, uh, low and stable with them. Hypothyroid and adrenal fatigue effects on thyroid ranges. So if you have a hypothyroid, your TSH is high, free T4 is low, uh, free T3 low, but to the right of the T4. Adrenal fatigue, TSH could be low, uh, T4 could be, uh, the free T4 and free T3 could be low as well. And you gotta remember, it shuts off those conversion processes, so you gotta look at that cortisol. A lot of patients have candida issues, and sometimes these candida issues, which is yeast in body, can mimic hypothyroid symptoms. This is a tongue that you can see pretty prevalent, but it could be itchiness in the ears, it could be skin rashes, it could be brain fog, it could be bloating, uh, those types of symptoms, constipation as well. And everything listed here um, on the slide, 
um, the overuse of antibiotics, the overuse of steroids, hepatitis B shots, birth control, hormone replacement therapy, the crappy standard American diet and too many sugars and carbohydrates in the diet will feed this stuff like crazy. I was an antibiotic kid growing up. I strep throat and earaches. God bless my mom. She was a nurse. Every cough, sniffle, and sneeze was antibiotics in my life. I have tendencies to get these little itchiness in my ears from the overuse of my antibiotics as a kid. Where are you going to get your calcium if you don't drink your milk? Drink your milk full of mucus, full of infection. Get that crap out of my life. If I, get, if I even have creamer in coffee consistent days, <clears throat> I start clearing my throat like crazy. Eliminate the dairy, get rid of the mucus. Very simple. Dr. Royal, Royal Lee was the godfather of PMGs, protomorphogens, glandular components. If your thyroid's underactive, you get glandular thyroid component to make your thyroid work more efficiently. If your organs are burnt out, your adrenals, you get glandular adrenal, it helps an underactive organ work more efficiently. Pretty basic things. Now with the conversion process, you got the brain, you got the thyroid, T4, T3. For those conversion processes to work, we talk more about nutritional deficiencies that could inhibit your thyroid. If you're lacking iodine, if you're lacking iron, selenium, zinc, vitamin A, B3, B6, B12, if you're lacking those, you're going to inhibit that T4, T3 um, conversion. And if you're on these types of medications, this could absolutely mess up that T4 to T3 conversion. Why is that going to mess those things up? Some of these interfere with your liver pathway. Block your liver pathway. You block a lot of your health um, conditions, you know, your immune system and everything that affects certain things like the thyroid and everything else. Other things, aging, alcohol, uh, BPA. You know, I get a lot of patients that ask me about the cruciferous vegetables. Does this really affect that T4 to T3? They, it's, they say it does. I, with clinical studies, uh, clinical practice, I should say, I don't see enough of it for me to cut that out with patients. I want patients to do a daily detoxification. We're being bombarded, the food, the water, the air. I'm doing my nitro greens on a daily basis. I want my phase one, phase two detox pathway open. I want to clear the crap that we're being exposed to because we can't live in a bubble today. Selenomethionine. This is the proper selenium to be on if your thyroid antibodies are elevated. Any patient I'm treating for thyroid conditions and they got high thyroid antibodies or the TPO, boom, selenium. Dr. Jeff, I have issues when I take iodine. I have reactions. A lot of the reactions are because you're deficient on selenium. Load up on the selenium, go back to the iodine. Some of them don't even have issues with that again. And that's kind of dicey. The iodine We'll talk about that, but the, the iodine can be dicey for patients if you get the uh, thyroid issues with the autoimmune component because it could drive those antibodies around. So you really got to be skilled to know what you're doing uh, when you're playing around with the iodine with those autoimmune thyroids. 56-year-old female hypothyroid since childbirth progressed to Hashimoto's, uses medication and still has symptoms, waking, cold, thin hair, fatigues. You can see her irons, her irons low, her vitamin D is low. That's simple stuff, simple stuff to fix. She's on, I believe she was on, yep, she was on a thyroid medication. I worked around, she wants me to treat her thyroid, and I treated everything else. I played her iron, I played her vitamin D. I played, her problem was her adrenals. I played her adrenals. Fatigue and sugar cravings, much better. 75% better overall. So she came in for thyroid issues, but her problem was more of her adrenals. Another part of her case that I suspected that she had some issues with was her gut. So I ran the sensitive seven food sensitivities. These should be in this range. And you can see she's got a compromised gut, lack of good stomach acid. By definition of a food allergen is an undigested protein. You need acid to digest those proteins. 
So if you don't have enough good stomach acid, you'll have a harder time breaking out of proteins and a higher amount of food sensitivities, and these are through the roof. These are through the roof. You're gonna have gut inflammation, cortisol goes up, weight gain follows that, and hormonal imbalance follows that, and then this all interferes the GI issue with the thyroid. So this is how you're kind of putting these pieces of the puzzle together versus just throwing thyroid medication at patients. Well, let's talk about iodine. Iodine deficiency is a problem worldwide, mainly due to soil depletion. Iodine deficiencies are the leading cause of preventable mental retardation worldwide. Iodine insufficiency, subclinical thyroid, weight gain, uh, fatigue, goiter, cancer, fibrocystic breast, impaired mental function. These are deficiency things that you'll see with patients. Uh, there's a few different routes of checking for I, optimal levels of iodine in the body. There's urine, there's 24 hour urine testing, there's the patch test, uh, urine iodine load testing, uh, blood and hair. Um, most patients can tolerate it very well. Even a normal thyroid, Dr. Tent and I will play simple iodorol iodine supplementation with it, even the metabolic thyroid component. It's easy to wake up the body and supplement thyroid stuff, even if your thyroid's in normal range. But with iodine, with testing, most patients are depleted on it because of things like chlorine, fluoride, and bromide, which we'll talk about in the next few slides, that will push this out of the body on top of this not being in the soil in our food supply today. The patch test is pretty simple and easy. You get some dark iodine. If it's fading pretty quickly in the next few hours, you know, your body's sucking this in and showing that you're pretty depleted on it. Some of the simple tests stood the test of time. Um, I know some people that'll do the loading test. I know people that'll just check it on a regular urine or even the, the regular blood test too. It's, it's preference and depending on what practitioner that you're seeing. Muscle testing too, we could, teeter your dose just through the simple muscle testing with it as well. Halogens, like I was talking about, the fluorine, fluoride, chlorine, bromide will all push iodine out of the body and people are just being exposed to this on a regular basis. A lot of people are just still continually brushing their teeth with fluoride. I want to talk more about fluoride in this lecture, but fluoride will destroy your thyroid. It destroys pushing iodine out of your body, which interacts with your thyroid. So people that are just filling their bodies full of fluoride and brushing their teeth twice a day with fluoride, you are interfering with your thyroid on a regular basis. I've got a hot tub at home. I try to start off with a salt system to use less chemicals and chlorine. You add salt, but it, from there it naturally produces chlorine from that. So. I'm like, I want something even cleaner than that. This Ion RX is pretty awesome. I just completely switched over my system to this. You put a cup of this in there a week and you could use a non-chlorine shock basis to keep it clean and it's simple. Dr. Jeff, how do you keep your kids off screen time? I do things like this with my kids they don't play with their electronics in the hot tub. I'm active with my kids all the time. I keep them off the screen time because I see what it's done to your kids. Iodine deficiency in correlation to thyroid ranges. TSH may be increased, free T4 low, free T3 increase. For you guys that like charts, that is what you'll see with iodine deficiency and excessive use of it. And like I was saying before, you have to have selenium to utilize iodine properly in the body. Those both go together. We have different sources for iodine in the office. We also have liquid iodine. These are some of our go-to ones that we'll use in the office. I like using iodorol, that organically bound mineral supplement I was showing you at the beginning of the lecture has iodine in it as well. I'm using that more to chill my system. I may not be using as much as the high potency one. And you can see as a T4 converts to a T3, look at these intermediates, iodine, selenium, iodine, selenium. This is what's needed for you to utilize and make your thyroid function properly. This is how I get patients 
thyroids to even work better when they come to me and they're on thyroid medication. I want my thyroid to work better, but I'm already on medication. I'll tell them I could work with you on that medication or we could get you off that medication. I could put you on my stuff. If I keep you on your medication and I work with your thyroid, I'm working with all your nutritional deficiencies that are inhibiting this conversion processes and giving you iodine, selenium, and all these intermediates to make your thyroid properly work better. Simple stuff, actually. These are some early signs of a selenium deficiency. Hair loss, quality of it, thyroid dysfunction, weakened immune system. Selenium is an antioxidant. So yeah, weakened immune system, cancer, definitely support in the literature with that, fatigue, hypothyroid, uh, twice in there, elevated uh, iron, muscle pain is pretty common with patients with this. Uh, RBC levels of selenium is probably the best way to look at this. Summing this all up and putting it all together, where do I start, Dr. Jeff? Where do I start? Well, a simple symptom survey form to look at thyroid and adrenal symptoms Filling that out is something very simple. Coming into the office, muscle testing. Is it your thyroid? Is it your thyroid? Is it your thyroid? Is it your adrenals? We can muscle test this stuff. What needs to be treated first? Your body will tell me. A complete thyroid panel. I want to see what your lab. The first time I did this lecture, when I talk about the adrenal and the thyroid, I found so many patients that had autoimmune thyroid issues because their doctors were just running the TSH and not looking at the TPO and thyroid antibodies. I caught so many of those, it was unbelievable. I want a complete thyroid panel and maybe even a cortisol saliva panel to see if you got underactive or overactive adrenals because that will mirror image thyroid symptoms. If you want, you could do body temperature measurements and you could easily determine certain things um, with thyroid or adrenal as well. And I'll get to that slide in a second. Optimal thyroid blood panel. Simple stuff, full thyroid component with the thyroid antibodies and the TPO factor. A lot of people think, oh, I'm gaining weight, it's my thyroid. Once I hop on thyroid medication and my thyroid's in between 1.0 and 2.0, the ideal range, all the weight's just gonna melt right off. Unfortunately, that's not the case. But if you're wanting to gear towards weight issues and run some panels, I like looking at the TSH, a thyroid panel. I had blood cortisol AM, PM. I prefer it saliva and checking all throughout the day. Your food sensitivities and maybe the candida factor. People are concerned about weight. I like running this and diving forward from there. If you wanna do the temperature stuff and you wanna go, was oh, it adrenal, is it thyroid and kind of figure it out versus run labs. These are some of the things that you will see, and it's a bit confusing. Take a picture of the slide and whatnot, or come back to it, but you can measure some of this stuff pretty easily and figure it out. A lot of uncertainty in our world. The one who is in you is greater than one who is in the world. John 4, 4. Many of you worry about the future, but God wins in the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture. You can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, social media stuff with the protocols, our supplements that we use, shop at our website. If you like what we do, support us. My previous lectures. And if you make it to the end and actually listen to what I say at the end, I always have my email at the very end of my lecture and I will respond to you guys. God bless.